Joe wonders if this is working from home or living at work. Emma has discovered that she likes dating Mark's profile more than she likes dating Mark. Esteban, he took an online violin masterclass, but he's not anywhere near becoming a master. Dustin bought a book on climate change, but it's shipped from England by plane wrapped in plastic. Now he's confused. Jason stumbles into a real-life conversation. He can't mute, he can't turn off his camera, he can't pee while he listens. Confused. Trudy wants to go to the office, but she also needs to work in pajamas. Simon and Sarah had a baby, and now everyone asks when the next one's coming. What's wrong with this one? Terence knows he should sneeze into his elbow, but isn't everyone bumping elbows? He's confused. These are confusing times, which is just about the right time to have the Burger King Impossible Whopper, a Whopper made without beef that tastes just like a Whopper. Hey, Mark. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not sure I'll ever go and get one of those burgers done, but if that video doesn't sum up how we feel, I don't know what does. Yeah, every day I love the fact that uh, she likes to date Mark's profile more than she likes to date Mark. I wonder if Karen has that same feeling. Ouch. <laughs> I had to laugh. My favorite part was, what's wrong with this baby? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, I feel badly for all the people that had babies during COVID. <laughs> now they think we're laughing at them or not. We're laughing with them. How are you doing this week after the big draft? We'll talk about that later, but... We will. We will. Got got the Steelers paraphernalia on today. Um, hey, why don't we jump into Weekly Pulse? We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about NFL draft. We're going to talk about um, some of the racism and support around the boycott in Europe. Some interesting brands and kids including a big Canadian one involved with the NFL draft. And I'm just stalling as I'm continuing to ramble here because I'm trying to get my brain ready for this weekly quiz that you've been putting me through. Um, you see if I can pass. Well, sorry, you've done surprisingly well the last two weeks. We'll see how you are doing this uh, week. I think I'm sleeping better. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to the uh, video. All right. I'm here at the first ever virtual store in Garbage Patch, and we want to close it down ASAP because this shouldn't be here. And by this, I mean the 80,000 tons of plastic in the middle of the Pacific that never goes away, and it keeps growing every year until someone does something about it. I'm Maggie Zhao, slow fashion lover and a big believer in high style with low impact. But I think we can do better than low impact. What if we could make a positive impact? And by we, I mean the Converse All-Stars, creatives from around the world who've joined us and created hundreds of prototype sneakers using sustainable techniques like ink made from air pollution and paint grown from glow-in-the-dark microbes. We're putting all these one-of-a-kind shoes in our virtual store on the garbage patch. And every dollar raised goes to cleaning up the trash this store stands on, which is all made possible by our amazing partner who has the right experience and long-term track record of revitalizing our oceans. Now, all we need is your help to close this store ASAP. What do you think of that, Mark? Well, you know, I think what I love about the notion is that the they, they aren't successful till they actually close the store, which is kind of a, a great irony. I love that. It's certainly uh, taken around. We're titled purpose a lot. I mean, I hear you. I'm sure that you hear a lot brands with purpose, 
everyone young wants brands with purpose and will buy with brands that aren't purpose. So obviously Converse is part of that conversation. So we'll go through a little quiz here, hopefully a little learning on the brands with purpose. So number one question for you is number of Canadians have purchased in the past 12 months because the brand had a purpose I relate to. So not only had a purpose, it had a purpose I relate to. Is it 14 million, 8 million or four and a half million? A 14 million. You are correct, sir. And the reality there is we're missing out on about half the population, 46% have in the past 12 months. That's once. So if we go next to the next slide. Hold on, you just redefined being Captain Glass half full right there. 14 okay. million people are doing it. And of course you come up with once, once they are. Once they are. Okay. They do it once. Is that by mistake or is that a commitment? The fact is just because you do it once in 52 weeks, 365 days, is that really something to pat ourselves on the back for? So let's go to the next one. The brand had a purpose I relate to and they bought it weekly or more frequently. Any brand, they could buy anything that has a purpose they relate to. 11, eight or four and a half million. Well, since I set myself up or set you up with my heckling there, I'm gonna go with C. And you are correct, two for two. So that only means that 24 and a half million people, 13 plus, do it once a year. And the point is, is that enough? So the fact is a lot of people like to jump on bandwagons, like yep. to say, like to feel good about it, like to wear it, like to be seen doing it. But do we actually have the commitment to actually move it forward? Is that a big enough commitment to change your brand? Um, so, I mean, how often do you have conversations with your peers and clients about purpose? purpose Every day of the week. And so what I would say about this, A, you're right. It's not a big enough number. And maybe you and I can have a future discussion about if you're a brand or you're a cause, how do you get in with that four and a half million person cohort? And how do we as a group elevate the conversation to get that, that missing nine and a half million that do it by occasion? How about the 14 million that don't do it? And that shouldn't surprise us because I've talked about it before where only 60% of people think it's important to support kids with cancer. So think about that in context. So I'm not Mr. Glass half full here or half empty, just realities. So let's go to the next one. I think Can it's you more... say Mr. Glass half really quickly three times? And by the time we're done, we'll actually come up with the appropriate name for you. One, two, three, go. <laughs> so percent, is it, does it driven more by men or women? I'm going to say women, and I apologize if that's sexist, but that's my belief. And we are wrong. And again, the fact is, I don't think we should make assumptions when it comes to purpose and purposes people relate to, because there's so many different issues and factors out there. How about by age group? What do you think is the highest? Is it the Gen Zs, the Millennials, the Boomers? Eric, can we go to the next chart, please? Uh, Gen Xs or the, sorry, Gen Zs, Millennials, Gen Xs or Boomers, which has the highest participation? Buying because of purpose. I know it's not Gen Z because they don't have the do re me yet. I know it's not boomers because they don't believe that it's the role of companies to get involved. So I'm going to go Gen X, even though my gut tells me millennial, because I feel like they put their money where they're I'm completely freaking wrong. So Gen X is in the part that you can't see under weekly pulse is actually 62% 19 to 24 are by because of it. So the fact is it's really driven about those people coming of age, university, that type of stuff. So the fact is, 62%, a massive percentage. So if you want to get in with the younger crowd, that's where the growth is. And that's a, a consideration for the next 50 years, right? So the fact is that's that's the future. And let's pause there because your colleague, Vanessa, and you know I like her more than you, has talked about that you can't just look at Gen Z as 13 to 24. And that's a, that's a huge number for 19 to 24 year olds, 62%. Yeah, Vanessa did a half an hour on this yesterday, which has way more detail, but another, and this is, I actually stole the slides from her deck from yesterday. Um, so again, you're doing fairly well. Not only are you Mr. Glass half full, you're Mr. Glass half ass because you're only doing half your job and they can't be else to do it for you. So therefore you are a two for two, which is actually good for you. Um, so let's go to the next one. So purpose-driven purchasing. On the left-hand side, the number one category of 240 was people that, purchase fitness wearable, 73% by purpose-driven brands. Which of these categories is the highest link to purchasing due to purpose? Cigarette purchasers, cannabis purchasers, or vitamin purchasers? Don't overthink this, Mark. 
I'm I'm going to go. I know I should save vitamin, but I'm going to go cannabis because I'm an investor in Trek, and Trek is a purpose-oriented cannabis company. And it's cigarette purchasers, 67%. What? The, the fact is, just because you smoke cigarettes does not mean you don't stand for purpose. That's the bias you got to get rid of. The fact is, don't make assumptions on your category. In here, you got vitamins, soft drink, clothing, retail. You have 240 brands across it, technology, energy drinkers. The point is, on the far right side, athletic apparel, cannabis, cigarettes, fitness wearables. There's a bunch over on that side, but... Again, I knew that you didn't have a chance on that one. Um, no, because I will admit I am a I am a pathetically inappropriate labeler, and when I see people, especially outside my building, smoking a butt, that cigarette in their mouth, for whatever reason, just set. I mean, you should. It's even worse than bad driving. Like you want to hear me go on a rant? It's the it's the smokers, not the cannabis smokers. No. But again, I know you don't want to hear me. All right. All right. Let's go next. Are they cat people or dog people? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one's higher? I don't fucking care. I have one of each. <laughs> you have no vote? I have no vote. You're going to abstain? Well, they have. I'm abstaining. It's just making me laugh. Cat people, They're dog cat people. Cat people. Got, so, what about cat people who smoke? They must be around 99%. <laughs> they must be. So, let's go to the next one here, Eric. We talk a lot about doing versus saying. You've seen this chart before. So we're going to go through a little bit on what actually happens and how easy and cheap it is to say, oh, yeah, I'm really behind that. So if we go to the next page, left-hand side, 93% of Canadians claim to support a cause today. One cause. They average 32 of them, but there's one cause. On the right-hand side, believe climate change is a major issue today is 56%. So among the group, the 93%, 56% say climate change. 36% of the total population purchase a brand once to help eliminate climate change, once. 9% do something weekly. So if you look at it, that's 91% don't. Um, so again, I think one thing brands, marketers, people is stop patting ourselves on the back for once. That's just a badge. That's not really commitment whatsoever. So the fact is, there's a big difference between saying and doing. And with a brand, there's a big difference between saying and doing. Is that Converse is only? foray in, or are they going to continually doing it? Like Nike, for example, with the Black Lives Matter and injustice has been going on well before George Floyd. Like they've been in that forever. It's authentic. It keeps going and going and going. So as a brand, if you want to be involved with purposes people relate to, you better live it. You can't fake it because uh, you're going to be found out. Same with consumers. Don't be fooled by people that do it once. Focus on the 9% that do it all the time. And we do have a bonus question to see if you can get this one right. Eric, we go to the next page. Question seven, which burger has 11 grams of sugar and over 1,000 milligrams of sodium, the Whopper or the Impossible Whopper? And you can see here, both 600 calories, 34 grams of fat. This is not a cause that anyone relates to. This is not what Noom would do. Those are disturbing numbers. But 600 calories. On top of that, which one has 11 grams of sugar? The, the Impossible Whopper, because this is the mythology of, of artificial meat. The reality is, I knew you were going to get that one wrong because it's both of them. How does oh. a burger? How does a burger have 11 grams of sugar in it? Anyway, <laughs> we, we 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 segue up. We went through purpose. Purpose has a place. 46% by 14 million people. The fact is, how do we get more involved? How do brands actually activate ongoing? I know you hate the word authentic. The point is, how do you actually make it part of who you are? And you can't before you have profit. Look, That's I know we're running. Really running a little behind here, but I do want to make the point. I think it's important when a brand is talking to a property who's pitching purpose, they really now need to dig into, don't tell me 73% of people pick, uh, uh, purchase a product because they support your purpose. How often they do it. That's your message, right? How often do they do it? How are right. we actually committed? Let's flip over now and sponsor Vex. Big night last night, NFL draft. Let's have a look at the number one pick who's going to make more money in five minutes than you and I are, are Don, this year. Hello? Trevor. What's up, Coach? How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm anxious. <laughs> well, we're about to make you the first overall pick in Jaguar football history. Congratulations to you. Marissa and your family. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Uh, let's go. Yeah, our owner, Shad Khan, would like to say a few words with you, all right? Perfect. 
Hey Trevor, congratulations. We're so hey, pumped to it. <laughs> hey, I'm just as excited. I'm, I'm excited to get down there. And Oh man, we're, the whole family's here, so it's awesome. So, we're gonna turn this thing in at the two minute mark. The league wants us to wait till then. So we'll turn it in, make it official in about a minute and 15 seconds. Let's go. All right, right buddy. You know, you know my next question, right? What you got? You got a leg workout tomorrow. <laughs> hey, I'll get one in while I'm down there. All right, hey, uh, look hey. Forward, hey, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow to make the first in-person pick of this in-person draft. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback Clemson. And so the inevitable has finally, finally become a reality. Finally, Trevor, Trevor, dog, dog, they're all happy. They're all happy. Well, I have to admit, I'm not a Roger Goodell fan, but I love the fact he walked out last night and told Cleveland to boo him. But what I loved even more was the chair where he invited fans to come up on stage and sit there while they made the picks. Yeah, it was a good, I mean, good show. It's like watching, it's like, man, are we going to be back live? Like, I mean, the fact is, even though we study it constantly, we know what's coming. The fact is to actually see people all live, enjoying it, understand the passion. I mean, fantastic to see. I want to run through a couple of quick highlights for me, Don, with the NFL draft. So one, you know I love Clubhouse. Are you on Clubhouse yet? No, I'm not. They're Get funny. your butt on Clubhouse. But yesterday the, or, was the start of the NFL's partnership with Clubhouse, so the first sports league to have a partnership with Clubhouse. So you could jump into audio rooms and hear the draft picks. So if you're on Clubhouse, you'd be infatuated with it. I think as a researcher, you got to get in there because there's a real behavioral uh, opportunity to understand, I think, in Clubhouse. All right. Now, I'm here in my great t-shirt, but Trevor Lawrence was outfitted last night in an Indochino suit. If you don't know Indochino, they are a great Canadian success story. Um, I've been actually following them a lot, partly because Drew Green, who's their founder, uh, used to work, uh, used to be a client. But, you know, it's really interesting. These guys are stealthily uh, really creating a whole influencer program. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is also getting married this year. Indochino's doing his clothing. So pretty cool. Do you have an Indochino suit yet, Donnie? No, I looked at it and I go, well, he must make a lot of money to wear that. But then again, if it's, if it's, if I think it looks great, it's not in fashion. So that's exactly what I think of it. He's going to have a lot of money. He did his NFT this week because everyone's got an NFT. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick quiz for you. How much did his NFT sell for? for $116,315.27. Well, I appreciate the precision, but it was $225,000. But you got to love the flow. Um, but, you know, that is chunk change to the deal he just signed with Fanatics. So this is a guy who's never played it down in the NFL, just signed a clothing merchandising deal with Fanatics. What is the value of that deal? I have no idea. It's $127 million. $37 million, which is still a whole lot of money. Um, he's number one pick. I mean, he's the number one high school draft pick. He's number one. He's lost, I think, four games in seven years. If this guy does not hit. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. But, you know, we talk about NFTs, and now players are actually asking for their salary to pay, be paid in Bitcoin. So let's have a look at this. Roll the tape. New at noon, Kansas City Chiefs tied in as Sean Culkin has announced that he'll take his entirety of his 2021 base salary in Bitcoin. Well, that is reportedly around $920,000. In a tweet, Culkin said, I fully believe Bitcoin is the future of finance, and I wanted to prove that I have real skin in the game, not just trying to make a quick buck. Well, Culkin, who signed with the Chiefs in early February and played college football at Mizzou, is going to be the first NFL player to be paid entirely in Bitcoin. Uh, Mr. Glass, half empty here, would identify the fact that he took his salary in dollars from what it said, and he's transferring it into Bitcoin like any other human being could take their money and transfer anything else. To me, it's a promotion. All they're doing is promoting. So you must have lots of shares of Bitcoin already. Or Absolutely. It's so like the guy who bought Beeple's NFT for $67 million. He bought it with cryptocurrency. So it's it's all hype. So so let's take our, our, our sort of skeptical lens off the draft. And I want to share with you a couple of quick stories. One, Najee Harris, the first round draft pick of Pittsburgh Steelers. Were you happy, by the way, that we drafted a running back? Yes, no? Very happy as long as our O-line's not number 31 again next year. 
Okay, which we were, and we were number four only back in 2016. But imagine this. In middle school, you're living in a homeless shelter in California, and last night you were a first-round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know what Najee Harris did yesterday? What did he, he do? He went back to that shelter and threw a draft party for those homeless kids. Let's have a quick look-see. Yeah. Um, you know, it was really emotional for my mom. Um, I, almost as if like she was crying in a way because, like I said, we have a lot of memories here. That was a time in our life when we was really low at, at a point. So, you know, it, it brought back a lot of memories of what we was going through at the time. For me, too. Um, and when I walked over there where I used to play at, you know, it brought back a lot of memories when I was little. And just seeing the rich and pal across the street brings a lot of memories of, you know, me playing basketball there and uh, meeting people there. Um, but, you know, it was, it, it was, it was emotional thing for us so um you know just doing this really um makes me makes me and, and my family feel a, a lot more better and just giving appreciation of here comes the pittsburgh steelers pick cue the boo birds with the 24th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the pittsburgh steelers select naji harris it's great to see people giving back. That's for sure. The fact is, it's fantastic. That's what we, if we actually want to go back to that cause and purpose, we need people to give back and people like that at that age. I mean, just 35 and a very major 100, 200 million bucks in the NFL, like, what are you doing? And the point there is there's so much opportunity to give back and, and raise big issues for things that matter to people. Now, I'm not going to let this moment pass before we head over to last call because we've got some important things to talk about. But I do want to say one thing that's important. One thing that dismays me last night, looking in all those draft rooms, white, 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 white. It's unbelievable. There are there's very few black people in a sport that is really driven by black athletes. Yesterday in the United States, the, black, the, United, the National Black Sports Professionals relaunched. I'm going to say that. I'm going to leave it there. Now we're going to flip over to some amazing solidarity in, in uh, European football. We're going to run two videos back to back. I just want to share these and then talk about the whole boycott around English football by some of the stars on social media. Go ahead, guys. Stop being lazy. <laughs> no, man, I'm tired. I mean, oh, man, I gotta go. We'll play together when I come back, all right? I'm the show three. If I can do this, so can you. So, a lot going on in European football right now, Don. Some amazing things, though. FIFA creating the Midnight Ramadan. Right. There's so many different great causes out there. Racism is underlying everywhere. As people aren't just people, whether it's religion or color or whatever it might be. So the fact is that if we had unison, like we did with we did with COVID, or we do with COVID, the fact is that's what we need. Is it's a global. It's a global issue. It's not a U.S. only issue. It's a or a Canadian only issue. It's a global issue as we see in Europe and other places. So, the more that's done, the better. It's just how do we actually get people to align? How do we actually get brands and organizations and political groups to align on one common purpose that's for good? Uh, and the fact is, unfortunately, greed gets in the way of it every time and laziness. I'm going to close with a quick video. Uh which I think is pretty monumental. You know, we can talk about Joe Biden's 100 days. We can talk about the fact that the U.S. is 
got hundreds of millions of vaccines in arms, even if it's only the first jab. But pretty amazing this week that behind the President of the United States was the Vice President being the first woman who hopefully will become, you know, the first female president and the first female speaker. And we saw the elbow bump. So thanks for the show, Don. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Uh, and uh, I think we'll just want to leave everybody with a very powerful, memorable close of the elbow bump. There's Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Uh, it is her chamber. Uh, she will be presiding. And she will be sitting behind President Biden. It will be the first time in American history that two women are on that day as Speaker Pelosi and, of course, Vice President Harris. And the, the, the image that we saw before, well, let's just actually talk about this moment. Well, here is, and here is the Vice, uh, Vice President, President Harris. Up. Let's listen in. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor to present to you the President of the United States. Thank you all, Madam Speaker, Madam Vice President. No president has ever said those words from this podium. No president has ever said those words. And it's about time.